Good day. This is Brad Caleb, PhD. And my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. For I continue to work on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. Today we're dealing with use your screechy to let your light shine. Christian oxymoron exposed restorative justice PMS versus PMS. Let's find out what we're dealing with today. I do want to make clear that we all understand I am not attacking anyone in any particular order. The challenge that I have is, like so many of us, I also face reality. When I watch TV, get the information, I used to do that for hours on. Four, five, six, ten hours I had uh, CNN and CBC and other English stations. But reality was that it started to bother me and I turned it off. And as I turned off the TV, I noticed that there was lots less intrusion in my life. But also there's something that I noticed. When there's peace in your life, you start filled with the love of God. I became more aware of the difference when I dig in the word of God or take time to just be quiet. And as I'm getting more insight, I'm sharing that. But I am more concerned about the body of Christ. I understand that Mr. Trump has a way of living which he took and made himself. That is his decision. That he can threaten and manipulate many millions of other people into that, unfortunately. But the body of Christ should know better. Am I a judge of somebody else? No. I am concerned about my brothers that are facing very soon the same question. Why have you been wasting so much time? Why did you not do what the Lord said? And the question is then, what is it that God expects from us? Now, and instead of saying this and this and this is wrong, I'm not stating that. I said only, use your screechy to let your light shine. A screechy is something that's very simple. It's a little plastic stick with a handle and you can wash your windows nice and quick. If you have a car and you know the dirty stuff that gets on the windows, you spray some water on it, use your squeegee and you just clean it. But so many things are so simple and we don't do it. I used to love walking in the woods or through the woods, particularly in Canada. Awesome territory. Uh, you have so much. And woods for me was also when my mom just passed away and I was sent to an orphanage with my brothers and sisters. All I remember, the only times that I was laughing was when we were heaping up all those piles of leaves, throwing them in the air, and just the beauty of nature. I just got a kick out of that. And my whole life it has inspired me. So going through the woods, the old trees, the fallen trees, some hit by lightning and some just laying there rotting and decaying while young willows are sprouting forth out of those old trunks. I found it fascinating. And when you take a walk through the woods in this present day, one presumes we know everything about faith and religion, yet nothing is further from the truth. Yeshua, for many people known as Jesus, instructed us to let our light shine before people so they may see the good things that you do and praise your Father in heaven. Yes, folks, that is what we are supposed to do. We are supposed to let our light shine. Do we have a light? Even if it is a small light, do you have your light on? See, first one must be alive and know the light of God in our life. In other words, are you aware that you can be a light in this society? No matter what is happening around us, it is possible to be a light. But what are the requirements to turn on the light? Are we willing and to learn and speak another language? The language of light? See, light's language is a love. And love is not carnal, 
the way we see it in our daily surroundings today. Modern day Christianity seeks a deeper awareness and understanding of the world. And though the assumptions we hold about this world transform the way we understand the word of God, as a result voiding the power of the word of God. Today we must challenge our speculations. As some quotations may make this point, we use this windows of opportunity figuratively. We are unlocking a topic, a scientific investigation unfamiliar to our view of the word of God. Knowledge belongs to him who searches for, to find and to seek, who thinks earlier that he does not know. Is this any different than the words of the apostle when he wrote in 1 Corinthians 8 verse 2, the person who thinks he knows something does not yet know in the way he ought to know. So at all times, even while I'm sharing with you, I'm learning, I'm getting on a daily basis more insight and I'm sharing the insight. Does that mean that you know exactly what it is that I'm aiming for, that I'm sharing with you? Some of it might go straight over your head and that is okay. There is nothing wrong with it. It's like in a family when you have different uh, types of kids. You have small kids, uh, they are maybe just barely born. You have other kids that are two or three, four years old and you might have some older kids that are 12, 13 years of age. You deal with them at a different level. Are you treating them like retarded people? No, of course not. But at the level that they can handle, the they get the information. And that is how we deal today. There's nothing more unpleasant than to know that someone speaks down at you. I'm speaking up to you because this is what I've gone through myself. It is a personal experience that I like to share. And I trust you with this information. We all know that we never learn enough, but there is one thing that I want to be cautious with, the disease of lying. As I'm getting through my decades, and this is now my seventh decade, that means I am 70 years of age. And looking back and talking to my wife, we have been married or on our way to almost 45 years. When I met people when I was in my 20s, I sometimes snickered a little bit and said, wow, they are still in love. They're holding hands. Friends that I used to visit on a regular basis. And now I understand that the love of God is so much deeper than just attraction. There is something, a beauty in understanding a spiritual aspect of life that is not just carnal, but it goes way beyond touching and groping. It goes beyond love. It's the understanding. It's becoming one and spiritually becoming one with God. That is a development in itself worth everything. We talked about the Christian oxymoron exposed. Now, an oxymoron is a contradiction. For some people, it might sound like a, a curse word, but it isn't. An oxymoron is when you have two contrasts. You have A and you have B. And it is an exposure. Whether you find it helpful to separate Jesus and Christianity, to look at them individually. In other words, some people say, I don't understand that stuff with Jesus. And what is Christianity? What does that have to do with it all? Well, the unfortunate problem is that I need some more time from you because this is where I had a problem. I educated myself or got educated in a Christian family. I went to school, Christian schools. I learned the catechism and I learned also at seminary and Bible school, the Bible, both the Old and the New Testament. I became a preacher and I was an evangelist and traveled around and etc., etc., etc. Does that make me more qualified? Just to show you that I studied a little bit more than what I share with you. But reality is, it is the Spirit of God that is teaching you. If you have no understanding whatsoever what the Bible is all about, and you only desire to get to know the Lord, that desire will help you to move on. And God will give you wisdom way beyond. 
because that is what he looks for. He wants our desire. If we seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, it's not the knowledge we have. It is the love of God that shines through. That is what the Lord is looking for. And I hope that that will shine through and when we share this with you. So I hope that you understand that, yes, I encourage you to believe, but you are believing as you please. Because as you go through your own personal journey, you will experience certain things maybe way different than I do, maybe way higher level. And that is beautiful because we all have our different levels of understanding and there is nothing wrong with that. That is the beauty of God Almighty. To complete what I started off with regards to President Trump and the disease of lying, with a man like him, you need to be close to him, maybe in his inner circle to get through to him. And who can do that better than the Spirit of God? So we can only pray and lift him up before God. My concern is the enablers, those that are manipulating him because they see his weaknesses. They see that the man is a particular individual. He went bankrupt several times and when he was bankrupt just before the inauguration he got bailed out and that person that bailed him out is sitting in his close group and makes decisions for the government i find it always scary when you owe billions of dollars to somebody that means usually that you do what they tell you to do and that is why i feel sorry for mr trump but the people that are enabling him to do what he is doing, that is where the cleaning up came up. When I want to clean my windows, I use that squeegee. And in order to squeeze, I need to have some water. So I spray or use a bottle with water or I use a bucket with water. Now, what is the use of a squeegee? You need some paper towels. He said, nah, that's not exactly what I want to use. You know, it's messy. The racks, ah, oh, that's too messy. And at least tricks. Newspapers. Well, newspapers nowadays, you don't see too often anymore. So what else would you use? You pick up this squeezy. And the best way to clean the windows is to have a good squeezy. And for indoor windows and outdoor windows that should be in different type of squeegee. But the whole thing comes down that you say, how can you make it cleaner? When you use a squeegee, first you need some fuel supplies. You need window cleaning supplies, a bucket or a spray bottle or soapy weather. Soapy water, not weather. Lint-free microfiber cloth that helps, a scrubber for, or a window mop. mop. Extension pole, and all those little things. And then you can follow some easy steps or you can do the advanced one. Now, I am sure if you go on YouTube, you will find a video telling you how to do that the best way. But what about your spiritual life? If we will use that squeegee, it is sometimes just that little bit that it needs, a little bit of water, a little bit of change. And we face a problem we fail to use the same common sense wisdom we employ in developing students. When we get a little boy who is six or seven years of age, we don't put him in college unless he is a wizard. He's a great mind. If it is somebody that's six or seven years of age, he goes to grade one or grade two. And so we deal with those levels as the kid can handle same with our spiritual development. I can talk very difficult and complicated, but when you can understand what I mean, God's Spirit will teach you and educate you. The beauty of that is that for our advanced students, you can make up the use of editorial uh, opportunities like a school system, an educational opportunity. God's Word intentionally presented to the people in the same manner. When we understand this universal wisdom, we employ ourselves in our endeavors to educate and mature our children. God, in his ultimate wisdom, does the same to help 
the people in the kingdom of God. So God's spiritual university of life, it means that there are many, many ways to carry the morsels of truth. Sometimes it is a bird that is used to bring a life to somebody that is in desperate need. But at an elementary school teacher deals with the basics before the student progresses to the next level. So our believers today, they are treated that same way to embrace the higher objective of life and transition men from a carnal believer into a spiritual mature son of God, we must first absorb the basics. Now, as we do not hold elementary school students in the same standards of achievement required for the higher grades to lead all of humanity into the, uh, the kingdom, and therefore does not suit God's designs to have the carnal believer lose faith. So faith is one of the first steps. If I believe, if I share, if I trust, if I have that faith that God is able to do that, then God will be able to work with you at that level. That doesn't mean you're stupid. Doesn't mean it's just you don't comprehend exactly what it is. And then God's love he will guide you. He will carry you through to the next level so that you can become a man or a woman of God the way the truth is set out. And gospel is light. And that is why it's the way, the truth, and the light. It's God is helping and walking with you on the way because it is His Spirit. See, when Adam and Eve lost that connection with God the Father and they were kicked out of paradise. I personally believe that what they were in for was that they were in the presence of God. And when they sided with Satan by making a decision to listen to the advice of Satan instead of God Almighty, they were immediately broken off the presence of God. Now that presence was their eternal life. And for us to get back to that life, we now learn to walk with God. And therefore God has given us so many tools. But like Jesua in his own words, he said, enter through the narrow gate for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter through it for the gate, for the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life. And the few that find it, uh, many are called, but few are chosen. And we all remember that, Matthew 7, 13 to 14. The narrow gate represents a door through the barrier of our minds that enables the disciple to move beyond the world's three-dimensional limitation. Uh-oh, am I using a difficult word? We have physical, that means near skin bones we can feel that we have our mental capacity i can talk with you i can communicate with you but i have also a spiritual aspect and that spiritual aspect you quite often feel the way when you talk with somebody that you notice that person is different i noticed that with my wife it is amazing my wife was brought up in a muslim environment and when we met uh, the only thing my uh, future mother-in-law asked basically as, an, as a devout uh, Muslim was that we would avoid debating faith. And so as my wife and I progressed in, from friendship into marriage, having children, going through life and dealing with issues that were not easy, we became one in every aspect. And as I start to understand what the beauty of a family was. That is how I started understanding the family of God. God yearns to be with you, yearns to have you close, yearns to share with you. And that love, that love will resonate in you as well. And that is what we're sharing today. And if I've stepped on people's toes, I don't want to make light of it. Sometimes the challenge is there, but reality is it is the love of God that makes me do these videos, that makes me help you, wanting to help, because it taken me so long to understand those issues. And when I came to a full and better understanding, 
I've wasted so many years, decades of my life, that I hope that you won't do. I bid you farewell. And remember, tough times never last. Tough people do. God bless you. Bye for now.